culture uh, group. You know, this is you all see. the different machine series that Weinig yes. and Holzer have. Yes, so this is yep. you know Weinig, Dempter, Ryman, mm -hmm. Holzer, right. um, y y you name it. Yep. Um, so same compatibility. All right. Uh, the difference here is going to be that you are going to host the database on your network. Okay, so um, this database will be listening and receiving information, also querying um, you, you know information from the machine. So. Uh, for, for this approach, we took a more modulistic approach, if you will. So uh, we've got an application that, that listens to information from a molder. We have an application that listens to information from an edge bander, um, you know, et cetera. So we're able to gather, you know, not just the via cockpit information, but also information, you know, that's specific to the machine type. You know, for a ripsaw, we're going to get per board information, you know, for a crosscut saw we're going to get per board information so that way you know we can see you know specifics on throughput you know lineal in versus lineal out um, and it's kind of a, a, a two-part uh, solution if you will you know we've got the uh, machines feeding information into the database which has a similar table structure to what you have here you've got your your maintenance information you've got board data you've got order information etc okay and you know you can be content with that. You know, if sure. you have, um, you know, an IT uh, staff that can, you know, create your reports, that can consume this data to build uh, your displays, what have mm -hmm. you. You know, this is um, this is what you get. You get total access to that data. Okay, now time out, Donnie. So a couple of things that and I know we're in the weeds today, but that's that's on purpose. Um, so a couple of things. First of all, this da this database, okay, is hosted on their on the customer's internal network. That correct? is correct. So there's no access to the cloud that's required. That is correct. Right. So in some in some larger facilities, that's actually a plus. That's, that's right. You keep mm -hmm. everything on one single network, yep. and you don't have to worry about external sources getting involved. That's correct. Right. So that's a plus. That's correct. That, yeah, yeah. And then the other thing is on this uh, on this database. This database can really get into what the machine is supposed to be doing. Now you brought up a rip saw. Mm -hmm. A rip saw is supposed to be ripping boards, mm -hmm. but it's supposed to be producing a good yield. That's right? correct. So now correct. so now this database can kind of go to the next level of reporting and and look at okay this uh, this machine is supposed to be increasing my yield. I'm going to feed the database yield numbers from this machine, mm -hmm. not just say linear feed. Right. So so again, you know, taking the modulistic approach, you have a ripsaw mm -hmm. module for, right. for this example. Yeah. Okay. So not only is the ripsaw receiving, you know, your via cockpit data, your notifications, mm -hmm. uh, your your machine state. Uh, um, maintenance, your maintenance information, uh, your maintenance information et cetera, right, stuff like but that. it's also receiving as each board is being ripped it's receiving you know board related attributes that's right so we're, we're receiving you know board width board length but we're also seeing the the strips that are coming out of that board mm -hmm. so then we can make a you know a, a calculation on the, the overall yield per board right you know now we realize so like going back to what we were talking about yesterday with via cockpit so you know this is not for everybody, right? This this solution uh, is, is specific, and it's not for everyone. Via cockpit, I think, really is for everybody. That's just oh, that's, a, that's an absolutely uh, essential tool to have at your shop. But this dashboard approach here uh, is uh, is kind of like a bolt on. You can you know you use it with via cockpit. It's not for everybody, but for those uh, I mean for those shops that are wanting to get. Uh, that kind of specific, uh, how can I say it, material yield information along with everything else and then put it into a single dashboard to mm -hmm, display, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, is a really good, uh, this is a really good solution. Right. So we really haven't gotten into the dashboard right, true, part true. yet. You yeah. know, we're, we're talking about you know, the listening. overall we're talking listening, about listening, right, listening the, the and the program, gathering of data. Yep, you the know, programs listening to those data. machines, That's right? right. That's right. And, it, and it's in, inquiring from those machines really specific information that only that that actual machine that that's correct that's would correct. would be able to give it you, you know you're not going to get rip information from an edge bander right uh, exactly you're, you're yeah. not going to get the and on the flip side you're not going to get the the lineal banding 
uh, amount yeah. from a rip saw. Yeah, or so, or or the uh, you know how much glue is left in the glue jet system. That's you know, right. The rip saw right. has exactly. no idea. Exactly. So uh, yeah, so this. Uh, now, Donnie, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you yep. a question. So this is so this is interesting. We're we're still on the day of the base. We haven't even gone over to the dashboard yet. So let me ask you this. So, you know, with um with this database being hosted on the network of the customer, um, obviously we per we um give the uh, customer that interface, which is the dashboard, which we'll get to, mm -hmm. but they also have access to the database, correct? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So Sorry. their data is their data. They have it. It's on their network. And if they want to query that data through a different means, they absolutely. can do so. You, you know, this is the perfect solution for, for customers that want to incorporate this data bank back into their ERP system yeah. or into a 30 That's where I was party, going. Right, into a third party application. This is absolutely the, the solution. That's exactly that. where I was going. Now yeah. we have a we have a comment on Facebook, so um, which is it's a question. Is that a production planning software? So this is so I think what we just talked about actually kind of dovetails into that, which is this so much isn't a production planning software, but it could feed a yep. production planning software. You know, by, I would say by looking at historical data, you could in the future use it for production planning. Absolutely. Sure. You know, sure, and, sure. and yep. you know, by uh, you know, writing reports, consuming that data, how whatever best fits your needs, yep. you know, absolutely I think it could be a production planning. Yep. Um, could be used so for production this is, planning. So yes. shops shops out there that are a little bit larger that have um, uh, you know that have a, a you know couple IT folks on staff or maybe source out their uh, programming or their ERP um, uh, maintenance mm -hmm. um, to a firm this is something that can really work in easily because it's your data on mm -hmm. your database on your network this is yes. something that um, you know accessibility to that data should not be a problem at all no not at all. No. Not at all. And I think I just to go back. I just think that that is this is a great solution because of that um, for a lot of mid to larger shops. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Okay. So that's so, kind of the uh, the, the first the back phase, end. The, yeah. the back end, <laughs> the back if you end will. Of this, you know, yeah, and, sure. and if you're happy with that, then then great. Um, <laughs> but if, if if you want something, you know, a template to bolt on, if you want something a little more, we can provide that also, and that is our. Uh, pre-configured template-based dashboard solution. So okay. this is like this is the uh, the sexy part of what we were just looking at. Yeah, right? absolutely. This is this I mean, is the graphical interface of that that uh, network-hosted database mm -hmm. that's collecting and listening to all those machines. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I say template-based, but um, it, when you get into the configuration of, of this dashboard, mm -hmm. you can configure it uh, in, in this uh, scenario here. This, this would be more like what you would see in a production management office, okay? So you can see an overview of um, some machine metrics up here. So right. We, we've got throughput um, for a, an opti cut saw, you know, a cross cut saw. So we've got the raw material in versus the, the product out, which correlates to the yield, which, wow, that is just an outstanding yield. Uh, must be a, a winding machine. Um, and, and then, you know, right over here we have the, the rip saw. Uh, metrics here, which is board footage in versus board footage out, which again correlates to yield. The second row here, we're, we're displaying order related information. So this is order status. You know, we're looking at, um, uh, for, for the crosscut saw, we're, we're looking at uh, a styles and so rails. This so this would have, be like your styles and rails mm -hmm. have its own little dashboard widget here. Mm -hmm. Then right next to it, we're looking at a scanner uh, that's working on maple flooring. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Uh, and next to that, you're looking at a molder that's working on some oak baseboard. Right. Right. And then right next to that, you know, we're, we've got an edge bander that, have, that's showing yep. us, you know, it's working on a countertops job, and mm -hmm. we can see the total amount of edges, the total lineal feet, and the amount of time that it's taken to band uh, that material. Right. So, so again, so not only are is the entire uh, canvas customizable with what you're displaying on there. But then the actual widgets themselves um, are, are determined and customized by what they're reporting on. Absolutely. So obviously you wouldn't have a donut chart 
on the edge bander job, right? right? That wouldn't make That's any correct. sense. You right. just want to know, is it working on that job or not, right? right? right. So now we, we see, yes, it is, it's in progress, but something like a uh, the, the P1500, the molder, that's working on the oak baseboard, well, it's taking a while, right? Because that's that's what molders do. They run they run for a while. And we want to see, okay, where are we? That's you right. know, where where are we on that? Right. And so you, you, you'll see the widget itself for the molder, you know, you've got a target uh, linear yep. foot that needs to be produced. So you guys probably can't see it on the video, but yeah, Donnie's pointing out there there's a little target which you can actually see on the dashboard and say, okay, that's where I need to be, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. great. So you've got a target and then you've got a current. So you can yep. see you know, where you are, which correlates to the percentage completion yep. uh, sure. for that particular job. So um, you know, here we have, again, the metrics, we have job-related status, mm -hmm. and then down below we have machine state information. So we've, we've actually configured it to view the machine state over a defined shift. You know, whether that machine has been in production, you know, setup mode, idle mode, etc. Right. Okay. We can also see in the lower left-hand corner the current state of the machine. Okay. So go back to a production office mm -hmm. who is in a corner of a building that can't see the production floor. Right. You know. Right. Right. Sure. The production manager can see exactly where they are in regards to order. They can see where we are in in regards to machine state. And you know, we've got here that error mode is red. So if at any given time we see this lower left hand uh, icon go to red, we know there's an issue right. and, and we can call down to the floor, you know, speak with our operator to see what's going on. So Donnie, um, real quick, so if, if folks are looking at this and they say, okay, well, that's great, but a couple things. One, I don't have that many machines mm -hmm. or um, I don't have this mix. Mm -hmm. So what happens then? Every it, Am I right in thinking that every shop's dashboard is going to look just a bit different? Uh, absolutely. So. Um, we'll jump over here. Here's a, uh, a similar example. Okay, now this this is actually looking at machines on our showroom floor, and okay. uh, you can see it's not very colorful. They're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what we have here, we're showing scanner stats. So if you remember the one prior, what was uh, a dashboard showing many different machines? Here we're showing two scanners. You can see the widgets are a little bit larger. Um, we can see uh, throughput information up top. We can actually also see number of pieces and we can see the machine state information, okay? Now, imagine if uh, you had a display uh, similar to this that was set up beside a single machine, okay? Uh, and in that scenario, you know, we've got maintenance information, we have notification related information, we have uh, machine state, and we have job information. So, uh, imagine this being set up for a molder, you know, across mm -hmm. the top you right. could have your throughput information, yeah. all right? Uh, then maybe um, below that you could have maintenance related widgets, you know, so that as the maintenance staff is, is walking through the building, they can clearly see, uh, you know, the current uh, state that they're in in regards to a maintenance task. So, um, so real quick, sorry, just to yeah. interrupt Donnie. So basically, I, I tell the audience that's, that's listening how that actually happens because um, there, no two dashboards are going to be alike. Mm -hmm. So how would a customer who's interested in this get the dashboard that actually fits them? Is it something that we do here at Wineing? Is we, we it something can that they can do? Uh, you can absolutely do it and we can definitely assist you. Okay, so you'll notice um, we've got a little icon here at the top of the dashboard. That can take us into configuration mode, okay? In configuration mode, we have the ability to configure the monitor. So you can give the dashboard a name. You can define the color scheme, the fonts. Uh, the refresh interval. Yeah. All right. You also have the ability to define the widget columns, if you will. So we have what's called small widgets, medium widgets, large widgets. Um, we, we get into the uh, real estate percentage that those really, uh, excuse me, those widgets take up on the screen. So you have total control over the screen layout. Okay. So you so you ask a software developer if you know the customer can customize something and this is what you get even though i was just hoping yeah. for a yes okay so. <laughs> we're thorough here <laughs> just okay so in addition to that you also have the ability to define your machines okay, oh, okay. so right. so we go in here and we set up the machines that we want to view okay we can edit those machines so here you can see yep. we're displaying uh you know details related to this scanner 
We've got the serial number. We've got an alias or name. Or nickname. nickname. Yep. That, that we want to give that. Right. We define the machine type and also the type of widgets that we want to display. So, you know, we're displaying state, order progress, metrics. And, you know, within the metrics, we have various metrics that we can pick and choose from. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, depending upon the machine type, you're going to get, uh, you know, uh, a different... Uh, options here right. so uh, extremely so flexible. very yeah very customizable yep. on the on the customer end so a couple things just to recap that uh, that setup I guess you would say um, you know uh, onboarding would be able to set you up with a dashboard whether it looks like this or the one that we looked at prior mm -hmm. but then um, it does not take it's really it's a it's a no code approach to right. customizing uh, right. that dashboard We've had another question, which I think we're going to get into, Donnie, which is what is the hardware and software that's necessary okay. to run this? But okay, and I know Donnie wants to talk about the hardware, but I do want to just pause for a second. Is are there any software requirements for this? Uh, as far as software, I mean, sure, you, you've got to have a, a database that, that's going to be hosted. Uh, we will assist in, in configuring that and getting it set up. You'll have to supply a host PC uh, to host the database uh, and any modules related to uh, the equipment that you want to uh, you know, receive data from. Uh, should you go the, the, uh, the, the dashboard route, you, you'll have to also host the dashboard application. Now, the dashboard application is, is a uh, server client type scenario. So think hub and spoke, if you will. Um, so we install the server application, you know, typically on the same PC that the that database, the database, is database is on, resides right? on. Yep. And then, you know, for each client, you supply the display size that, that you wish. You know, you could put it from uh, you could go from a 32 inch screen to right. a 55 inch screen. And when we talk about display size, we're talking about the actual physical television, yes. computer monitor, um, you know, projector, how, however you want to display that. Mm -hmm. But that that display that the that the customer will be using needs to have what type of input? An HDMI input. Just so an HDMI. HDMI input. Okay. Simple so, HDMI input. So and this so, could be this could be any modern uh, television. Uh, computer screen, um, really. I mean, most displays now come with HDMI inputs. That's all you need. In That's fact, it. many shops out there um, who would be interested in um, these dashboards probably already have displays mm -hmm. that they utilize in their shop. Sure. Um, so now, what would then go from the HDMI to the display? Right. So, you know, the, the beauty of, of this is the, you know, like I said, server client. Mm -hmm. We have the application that resides on the server, collecting uh, the data, and also um, making that data available to the dashboards. Now, at the client level, you need a simple micro PC, okay? Simple micro PC, HDMI, 120 volts, network cable, okay? That's all we need. So, uh, this little guy can easily mount behind the screen, right. sure. up out of the way, yep. um, and it requires, you know, other than hooking up, we, uh, once pre-configured, mm -hmm. um, I'll show you. So network you, cable. you're now displaying. So now uh, we've hooked up our HDMI cable. Mm -hmm. We've connected our network cable. Now we'll connect the 120 volts. Okay. This little guy is pre-configured to go out and look at our server. There you go. Any moment now, <laughs> and there we are. So now we're so, looking at a winding pulse circle. So out. once the database is set up and listening to the machines, mm -hmm. you can take this microcomputer mm -hmm. and the display mm -hmm. and the HDMI and the power cord, you know, what you need, mm -hmm. and you can just go anywhere. All you have to do is plug it in. Plug it in. That's what well, we did. Once it's pre-configured. Now, sure, yeah. if, if you want to adjust uh, the display itself. Mm -hmm. Of course, this was pre-configured to display the state of six machines, you know, similar to what we were looking at earlier. But, sure. you know, once this is configured to the machine, 
all of the machine related information as to what is displayed is stored on the micro PC. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's not sure. stored at the server level. Sure. So sure. You, you have total flexibility yep. uh, at each display. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. So, um, so we're now going to kind of, I, I, I kind of want to take a step back and look at um, kind of a larger approach and look at ap actual applications mm -hmm. of, of these dashboards. So, um, this dashboard approach can be used in situations where you have various cell manufacturing happening, mm -hmm. where you have different work cells um, that are reporting or that need to report on and need to see in real time different metrics from each other. Sure. Right? They have different machines. They have different, I mean, you know, a, a cabinet shop is a great example um, where you have different cells. They have different machines. They are reporting on different pieces of information therefore you want to see a different display at each work cell so absolutely. this is where this really could come in very helpful absolutely where the ex and in the exact same solution would then be uh, used just configured differently in more of like a management office mm -hmm. where you could see the entire plant right absolutely right absolutely um, architectural millwork let's talk mm -hmm. about architectural millwork uh, same deal so you have you know uh, let's Linear say molding have, cell. Yeah, you, well, or I was going to say you have a line of molders, mm -hmm. right? And then maybe you got a scanner, uh, a rip saw, and some chop saws over here. Mm -hmm. Well, again, um, those those molder operators, um, they don't need to, they, they don't really care about the yield on that rip saw, right? No, but, um, but think about, okay, so you have a line of molders working together, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got an operator at each molder. Right. Let's say you had a display set up for each molder displaying. Uh, the information and data for that motor. Right, sure. Okay? Human nature is going to, you know, kick in and I would say f force those operators into some competition. You know, they can see, you know, they can <laughs> yeah, see the sure. amount of downtime. Right. They yep. can see the amount of downtime. Yeah. They can see uh, the amount of setup time. They can see the amount of idle time over the course of the shift. They can also see the linear amount. So mm -hmm. to me, it's going to force those operators to want to get the best numbers at the end of the day. It's total transparency. It is. It is total transparency, and it's customized to those people that it's helpful to. Yes. So that's another point that we want to drive home. That, and this is something that we really um, that we care deeply about, and also that we try to set up our digital business solutions uh, around, which is. We want to get the right information to the right people. Yes. Because mm -hmm. when you get irrelevant information to the right people, mm -hmm. then everything becomes irrelevant, right? right? Right. So once you see a dashboard, and this is so true in manufacturing, once you see a dashboard where the data displayed on it is either erroneous or mm -hmm. irrelevant, the entire dashboard becomes a moot point. Yep. You don't pay it attention to it, right? Serves no purpose. Yeah, it serves no purpose. No right. one's going to look at it. Nope. Everyone's going to look at the entire display and say, oh, whatever, that's not right. 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 And so this is something that we we constantly are in communication with our customers Yes. and saying, okay, well, what is relevant? What is it that you need to know so that we can have our module? listen for that mm -hmm. and then we can display it, yes right absolutely I mean yeah. this, this is something that's uh, it, it's evolved quite a bit within the past I'm gonna say month and a half and it, it, mm -hmm. it's it's um, it, you know it, its origin was communication with customers yeah you know listening to what the customers need and reacting to that yeah we quite simply. yeah we really should do a um, yeah we really should do like a live segment mm -hmm. on on uh, data transparency in a manufacturing shop, we yeah. should we should yeah. do one of those because I mean it's it's just the the nature of that is mm -hmm. uh, is really it's fascinating and when you do it right it's so empowering mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's a little tricky to get it right sometimes. Sure, uh, you have you have to listen mm -hmm. and uh, so many times out of the box solutions do, do not fit your shop. Okay, everybody out there watching that's in manufacturing, you know that right? How many times? Um, have you heard a successful story of a manufacturer getting an ERP system, installing it, and it works great, right? Then it doesn't happen. Never. It doesn't ever happen. The same, <laughs> uh, yeah, the same with uh, job planning software. Right. That doesn't happen. Well, the same with, um, the same with this. The same with uh, production floor monitoring. You can't just pick a solution off the shelf, plug mm -hmm. it in, and expect it to be helpful to everybody all the time. Nope. Right, you you might get fifty percent out of it, maybe, 
But this is a solution that's actually customizable, mm -hmm. and therefore you're displaying the right things to the right people. That's right. That's right. You know, and, and you know, talking about customizable, you know, just uh, you know, over the course of the, the, the past two days, you know, in conversation with customers, you know, there have been some really great ideas. You know, first of all, you know, we've we've tried to tailor what we we're offering now to the customers' needs, but there's been some really great right. ideas to come from customers in just the past two days sure. that uh, will definitely be incorporated into uh, future. So, Donnie, couple kind yep. of rapid fire uh, questions before we uh, before we move on because we got we got all kinds of demos mm -hmm. lining up behind us for the rest of the day. Okay, so um, can uh, right now the dashboards can they only reflect data for one again holster machines? That is correct. Okay, yep. so right so now it's that goes, one that takes again us holster. back that takes us back to the compatibility list. You know, we're only working with Wynik Holzer machines that reside on that compatibility list. All right. Yeah. Uh, great. Um, how long does onboarding take? Uh, it depends. Uh, again, it's a modulistic approach. Um, depends on the number of machines. Uh, that being said, you're, you're looking at, uh, you know, one machine, you could be up and running in an hour. Okay. Um, you, you know, uh, again, uh, each machine, uh, because machines are different and there's specific information and specific configuration that has to take place for that machine type, uh, it could vary a little bit. But uh, I mean, we're not talking days or weeks here. We're talking, you, you know, hours, okay. minutes to hours. Minutes to hours to right. for onboarding. Perfect. Yes. Um, and as far as future development on this, uh, what can we expect with releases? Ever evolving. Ever evolving, um, ever all the evolving. time. And, and well, what, what? Back, back to back to the architecture itself. You know, the beauty of it being server client based. And, and if you didn't notice, I mean, it's more of a it's a web based application. Okay, so we're installing uh, a single application uh, for the dashboards. Um, and if we make uh, modifications or, or uh, improvements to it, it's a matter of upgrading that single application, hitting the refresh button on your display which uh, you know are, are accessible across your network um, and you're yeah. up and running. So um, so real quick, yep. you, and because you mentioned web application, that doesn't mean that it resides on the internet. No. No. Okay, that's no. not what that means. It just, um, it just, it just means that it, it runs off that same type of, I guess, application you would say. Right, the, the uh, application installs on your server. It creates its own web server. Uh, mm -hmm. Trying not to get too technical here. Um, but it's available on your network only. You you know, unless you use a VPN of some sort, you're not going to access it from outside of your network. Right. So it is confined to your network. To your network. Again, we talked about that in the beginning. That's a plus for a lot of people because you're not having to go outside of your network. With that said, Donnie, um, you know, it's also should be noted that um, unlike via cockpit that we talked about yesterday, mm -hmm. Uh, unless you have a VPN that you're connecting into your network, right. it's not like you could, you know, be on vacation and no. bring up the dashboard on your phone. But it, it's this not is, it's not meant for that purpose. It, right, you know, exactly. That, That's exactly you know, I used right. the word static uh, earlier. It's it's not something that you browse, it's something that you, you create the dashboard, you, you you hang it on the wall, you stand it up beside your, your You're machine. looking at KPIs yes. throughout the day. You yes. know, you want your people to look at the KPIs, you want to look at the KPIs. Right. It motivates them, it keeps everybody accountable, it helps you manage the shop floor. That's the purpose. And it provides right. transparency to your, your production management office. Right. You know? Yep, absolutely. Yep. All right. Great. Very Donnie, good. thanks. So, okay, so if you guys, anybody watching this, if you're interested in more information, I think the best, uh, the best thing to do, the best next step, um, call up your local Weinegger Holzer expert, okay, mm -hmm. and let them know that you want to demo this, okay. We'll do it on a virtual demo, mm -hmm. okay. You can uh, we'll, we can we'll, answer your specific questions. Yeah, yeah. We'll look at your actual environment. Look at okay, what machines do you have? What would this approach, this solution look like in your shop? Again, this is not a, um, here's the dashboard, take no. it and uh, thanks a lot and that's that. No, we, we work to make sure that the dashboards that you're displaying in your shop are actually relevant to your production. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Absolutely. All right, well Donnie, thank you uh, for uh, joining us. Absolutely. Uh, that's it, let's see. Uh, we have another live stream coming up in just about 15 minutes. Um, we're gonna go, actually speak, we talked about scanning. Um, we're gonna be hopping down to uh, 
a scanner uh, optimizing line uh, that's right downstairs here uh, in about 15 minutes. So uh, if you guys are tuned in, just stay on Facebook or YouTube and we'll be back then.